video, I'm going to cover a riddle that I find really fascinating. And I love to solve this one because it presents really great issues for other riddles that are related. So let me get to the riddle and explain to you what it is. I'll pause the video and you can try and solve it. Now, the premise of this riddle is that you're trying to bake a cake or something or do something that takes four minutes. So your goal in this riddle is to measure four minutes exactly. That's your goal. You're measuring four minutes with a clock. Now the challenge is, uh, imagine, let's say you're in the kitchen and you're trying to bake a cake and you need to measure four minutes. Well, how do you do that if you have two clocks and one clock measures time in chunks of three minutes and the other clock measures time in chunks of five minutes. So the goal is, how do we use these two clocks to measure four minutes? Now if you're wondering how these clocks might work, imagine that the three minute clock, for example, what it does is it runs and every time it hits three minutes, it rings a bell. So it starts, it goes for three minutes, hits a bell and then starts again. It goes over and over and over again in a circle. And every three minutes it rings and goes ding and you know three minutes have passed. Now the five minute clock also runs in a constant loop. And every five minutes it rings and you know five minutes have passed. So you don't even need to reset these clocks, they just keep running. And every, every five minutes this clock rings, every three minutes this clock rings. And what you can do in this riddle is you can start them at any time you want and stop them at any time you want. Also, you can reset them at any time you want. Um, and also in this riddle, we have to assume that resetting them doesn't take up any time. So it doesn't take, a, doesn't take like five seconds to reset the clock. It just resets. So with that in mind, think about it. How would you use these two clocks to measure four minutes? And again, I, I'm going to pause. Well, you, I encourage you to pause the video before watching because I'm going to show you how I'm working this out. And as you're solving it, think... How much time do you really need to accomplish this? What's the shortest amount of time? Okay, and now, um, spoiler alert, here's my solution, and I think it is the fastest uh, way of doing this. So what I would do to start is start both clocks at the same time. And I'm going to run the five-minute clock with this green color and the three-minute clock with the pink color. I'm going to use lines to represent the time. So five-minute clock runs, at the same time that the three minute clock runs, what will happen? Well, they'll start at the same time, and after about three minutes, the three minute clock will ring, and then it will start again. So, let's just map that out for a second. If we run the three minute clock, it rings, and then runs again, the next time it rings, what will you know? Well, the next time it rings, you'll know that six minutes have passed. So when the, the three minute clock rings the first time, right? two minutes later, the five minute clock will have rung. So you know that the time from the ring of the three minute clock to the time that the five minute clock rings is two minutes. So let's map that out. This is a two minute chunk of time. And that actually is going to be quite helpful to you because when the five minute clock rings now there's a one minute time, one minute chunk of time before the three minute clock runs again. So run both at the same time, three minute clock rings, and then it resets. Now when the five minute clock rings and this three minute clock is running the second time, you'll know that from the moment that the five minute clock rung until the three minute clock runs rings again is a one minute time span. So let's look at that. That's a one minute time span. We're on the five, and then we're on the five minute clock again and see what happens. And you'll see that this problem is starting to develop nicely. Here, this is a one minute chunk of time. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is you're able to bake this cake or whatever in four minutes. Why? Well, because when the three minute clock rings the second time, from that moment until the five minute clock rings again, is four minutes. If you look at it right here, right? 
This chunk of time is four minutes. What has happened is the three minute clock has rung twice and the five minute clock has rung twice. And you can almost think about that. Oh, well, for the five minute clock to run twice, that means 10 minutes have passed. And in that 10 minutes, the three minute clock has rung twice. And that's six minutes. And the difference between them is this time right here, the four minutes you need. So how do you bake the cake? Well, you run them at the same time, the three minute clock will run, let it reset, right? Now when the five minute clock runs out over here, run it again. This is the five minute clock mark, the second running. And when the three minute clock runs a second time and rings, ding, right? Throw the cake in because now there's four minutes left on the five minute timer and you can bake what you need to. And, and this problem for me was particularly challenging and the goal is to say, well, how much time did you take to do this? Well, I took 10 minutes. And I think that's the fastest solution, but I encourage you to try and find faster ways of measuring out the four minute time period. Do you need to run the clocks this long in order to measure out four minutes of time accurately, or is there a quicker way to do it? All right.